The slump in oil prices means lower tax revenues and has now worked through to Scotland's balance sheet. We're talking here about 2014-15. In that financial year, it's reckoned that Scotland's share of North Sea revenues was £1.8 billion. That's down from nearly £4 billion in the previous year, a reduction of 55%. Scottish ministers visit a high-tech site in Edinburgh and stress that Scotland's onshore economy is growing, compensating for the problems in the North Sea. But they admit the figures are challenging. There's no getting away from the fact that, yes, this is a difficult time for the North Sea oil and gas sector and that is reflected in these figures, but Scotland's economy is strong. Uh, and if you look over the medium term, that strength is obvious. And if you look today in terms of our higher employment, higher productivity growth, that strength is very obvious too. The growth in onshore revenue in Scotland lags behind that of the UK. Scotland's overall tax take per head, including oil, is fractionally lower than the UK for the first time in 36 years. And the oil revenue figures may well be worse in the current financial year. Critics say that means Scotland would have been in big trouble if we had voted for independence or full control of tax and spending. I think we would have been facing huge cuts now if Scotland had voted for independence. You know, the, the deficit has doubled, it would have had a huge impact on public services, cuts to schools, cuts to hospitals, and at each time of asking, the SNP misled people about the scale of that deficit. But ministers say North Sea Oil has sent a total of £300 billion to the Treasury without any oil fund being established in Scotland. They've urged the Chancellor to assist the industry in the forthcoming budget. Brian Taylor, Reporting Scotland.